In this video, we'll be looking at some of the common errors you may come across while building your surface models. I'll be showing you some of the conditions that might trip you up and a few strategies to work with. Let's take a look at the first condition. This is high curvature. So in this sketch I put together, I've got three lines. The first line here is a straight line. It has no curvature, none. This next one has low curvature. Could say it's got a high radius, but it has a low curvature. So this one, of course, is high curvature. Starts off in one direction, ends up pointing in a completely different direction. So why is this a problem? Let's take a look at a surface I've built using my high curvature input geometry. And we'll take a look at the offset command. So I'm going to come up to the model tab. I'm going to choose thicken offset. I'll select my surface and I'll just flip this over so it's on the inside. And I'll up the offset to five millimeters here. I'll make this an offset surface. So we can see now the inventor is going to create some self intersecting geometry. Let's see what happens. We'll choose OK. And in this case, we may not have got the result that we expected, but Inventor has built a surface for us, which is great. So in this situation, high curvature isn't too much of a problem. But when could it be a problem? I'm going to go back using Control Z. Now let's try using high curvature in a sweep operation. I'll pull down some geometry I've already prepared, and I'll start the sweep command using sweep. This is my path. This is my profile. I'll make a surface option. This is my profile. This is my path. And I'll choose OK. Now this time, Inventor hasn't managed to create this surface. Now the tip here is to look at the red text. The red text means that Inventor has more information to give us. And if we click on this red text, we can see a preview of the surface Inventor was trying to build. I'll just zoom in here. Once again, we can see the problem is self-intersecting geometry. Now, while Inventor handled the self-intersecting geometry on the offset pretty well, in this sweep command, it's not going to work. So we need to work around this. So if sweep doesn't work, perhaps loft will. Let's try that. I'm going to hit cancel. And I want to create a finishing sketch for my loft. And in this case, I want to use this starting geometry here. Now, unfortunately, this geometry is perpendicular to the surface. So I can't mirror this geometry in its own sketch and you can't mirror sketches directly in Inventor. So I'll do this with a 3D sketch. I'm going to choose create 3D sketch and I'll need to include this geometry in my sketch. Now, unfortunately, if I include this geometry, I won't be able to mirror it. So I need to recreate. What I'm going to do is just select these four points that my CV spline is running through. I right click and choose OK and I'll come back up here and choose CV spline. I'm just going to create a new CV spline directly over the top of this one. I'll right click and choose create. Now this one I can mirror, so I'll come up to the mirror command, choose the line I want to mirror, and for the mirror plane, I will choose my origin plane going through the middle of the sketch here. I'll choose apply, and then I'll choose done. Now I can back up out of this sketch and try my loft. So I'll come up to the loft command, surface loft, Select my starting geometry, come back up, select my finished geometry, come back up to rails and select my rail. And I'll choose OK. This time my surface does build. And again, maybe not quite what we were expecting, but at least we have something to work with. We could continue adding profiles in here to further refine this surface. So high curvature. It is pretty easy to spot in this case but it can be much harder to diagnose on a complex surface, particularly if you're trying to thicken or shell a surface. So if you can't avoid areas of high tangency in your model, you may have to create more complex geometry to build around them. Let's move on. The next issue we're going to discuss is near tangency. Let me just go to this saved view and I'll pull down some geometry I created earlier. So I have three surfaces here, all of which contain two faces and an adjoining edge. This first surface is definitely tangent. That's nice and smooth and we can't see any problem with that at all. This surface is definitely not tangent. Two surfaces with a hard edge in the middle. This final surface, it's a bit trickier to tell whether we've got tangency or not. Now, one thing we could do is analyze this. I'll turn on this analysis I created earlier. Zoom in here. So you can see these two surfaces that are definitely tangent to each other have nice smooth curvature combs running the whole way across, smooth across the bottom and smooth across the top. Right where the edge joins, we can see that the curvature combs are pointing in exactly the same direction. This is definitely curvature continuous geometry. 
On our surface here with non-tangent geometry, you can see we have this very distinctive V-shape where the two surfaces are not tangent to each other. Now this is a bit trickier to see on our final surface, but if we zoom in, you can see that same distinctive V-shape. So we could have a slight issue with this, but without using analysis, it can be a little bit tricky to see. Now there is a quick way I can show you to analyze these. I'll just turn this off. Okay, so let me just select this edge right in the middle here. When I left click on this edge, you can see it's just an edge. I don't have any other options. There's no other options to choose from. If I select this edge, as you would expect from a highly creased edge, we have the option to flit it or chamfer it. Now, if we select on an edge between two surfaces and get that same option, we know these two surfaces are not tangent to one another. So that's just a little quick tip to quickly analyze a surface that's causing you a problem if you've got a near tangent condition. So why is near tangency a problem? Well, let's just pull down some more geometry I have ready here. So I have three solids I've built here because it's just a little bit easier to demonstrate using solids in this case. And I have, again, two faces which are definitely tangent to each other, two faces which are definitely not tangent to one another, and finally two faces here which are close to tangent but not quite tangent to each other. Now I'm going to do a shell command with these. So I'll come up here and choose shell. And I'm going to choose the same two faces in each case. So I'm going to select this main face and this one here. I'm just going to turn off face chaining. So this face and this one here, this face and this one here. And I'm going to choose OK. Now you can see here that we've got a very nice perpendicular offset to this face. That's worked really well. And in this face, we've got a chamfer running the whole way down. That's what we expected. But in the last face, you can see here we've kind of not got what we expected. This face underneath is perfectly flat. This face at the top is chamfered. And maybe that's not what we wanted to happen. Well, the reason that's happened is because Inventor uses a slightly different algorithm for calculating faces that have tangency and calculating faces that don't have tangency. So in this case, Inventor used the opposite algorithm from the one we were expecting. And that's why we didn't get the result we're after. So the message is try and avoid near tangency. And if you're having problems, do that quick check to see if near tangency could be your issue. Okay, let's move on to our next issue. This one is sliver faces. Again, I've got a preset up view here and I'll just pull down this geometry. Okay, so here I have a sliver face. Now you probably won't see this unless I zoom right in. There's our sliver face right there. So let's move on to our next issue. And this one is sliver faces. So sliver faces are tiny, tiny faces that you may accidentally build into your surface model or more likely will crop up as a result of importing geometry into Inventor that was created using a different modeling kernel. The problem with sliver faces is that just like singularities, Inventor is trying to do a lot of calculations to analyze a tiny surface. In this case, I've built this sliver surface in so I can get rid of it just by making some adjustments. And if you've accidentally built in a sliver face into your parametric part, and I recommend that you fine tune it, just make some small adjustments to see if you can get rid of it. If you've bought in a sliver face using a converted file that's causing you a problem, your best option is to use the delete face command to remove it. I'll show you that now. So we'll come up here to the surfacing toolbar. We'll choose delete face. We'll come down again and find that sliver surface. I've selected it, but I'm going to choose the heal option. And watch carefully when I choose OK. Bang, that sliver face is gone and it stitched up those two faces pretty closely. Whilst I wouldn't recommend using the delete face tool as part of your parametric workflow, it's a very useful tool for cleaning up geometry you've imported from elsewhere. Let's take a look at our final example, singularities. Now we've mentioned this before, and it's at the root of most of the problems you'll have with surface modeling, and it's the situation we are most keen to avoid. Let me just pull down the last geometry which I have for us here. Inventor uses a NURBS based modeling system. Now, essentially, this means that the mesh that Inventor calculates is based on a four sided patch. So, NURBS based modelers don't do three sided faces very well. In fact, they can struggle with any face that has an odd number of sides. To demonstrate this, I'm going to build a loft using the geometry we have here. So, I'll come up to my loft command. I'm going to choose the surface option. I'll start with this profile here. Come back up, choose click to add. Hover here until Inventor asks me to choose. I'm going to choose the point. 
And then finally for rails, I'll click once more and click on the rail I want to use. Okay, that looks like a pretty clean surface, but to show you the issue I've got, I'm gonna turn on this analysis. I'll right click here and choose analysis visibility. Now this curvature comb analysis is showing us roughly what the isopalms are doing on our surface mesh. So the isopalms are the UV grid that denotes our four-sided mesh. And as you can see at one end of our loft, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six isopalms, creating six divisions. And those six divisions run all the way through till we get to the far end where they come to a point. Now this is known as surface degradation. All that geometry is trying to happen in essentially a finite point, a zero point. This is called a singularity and it's what we're keen to avoid. Let me show you why that's a problem. Let me just right click here and turn this analysis off. And I'm gonna try and extend this face. So I'll come up here to the surface command, drop down, choose extend, and I'll select this edge and I'll choose okay. Now you can see the inventor cannot extend this edge and the reason it can't extend it is because it can't calculate the geometry in that singularity. So I'll hit cancel here. What we've learned is, it's quite important not to build in singularities if you want to continue using your surface in a workflow. Let's look at another way of creating this surface, this time using the patch command. So let me just come down here. I'm going to right click and choose delete. I'll keep those sketches, thank you. And I'll come up here this time to my patch command and I'll select the geometry we want to use for our patch. That's our patch created, very good. Now that seemed pretty easy. And the patch command does work slightly differently to a loft. The patch command will create a four sided nerve spaced mesh, which it will then trim back to the input geometry we've given it. Well, let's take another look at the analysis. Okay, so this time we can see their isopalms are in there, they're nice and square and regular. We don't have any issues there until we get to these corners. Now, we do have some slightly weird things going on there, not what we expect to see at all. So, what we found out is that surface patches are pretty quick and easy. But in fact, they do have their own inherent problems. Surface patches aren't too good at surfaces that are curved in both directions. So one last strategy, which I highly recommend. Let's just turn this off again. We'll delete our patch. Once again, we'll keep the sketches. And I will just turn these two sketches off. And let's take a look at the input geometry we had. OK, so underneath this, I have a surface I built from a single sweep and it's a path in that direction and a profile in this direction. And we have some geometry here, which is the shape we're trying to create. Now, what we're gonna do here, essentially we've overbuilt this surface, and this is the strategy, overbuilding surfaces and then trimming them back manually. Similar to what the patch does, but with more control. So the surface is much bigger than we need. We have our cut geometry, and we'll come up here to the trim option. We'll select this geometry, and then we'll select what we wanna get rid of. And we'll choose okay. So we've created the same surface again, similar to one we've created with loft, similar to one we've created with patch, but let's have a look at the analysis for this one. So I'll turn the analysis on. I'll just edit this and ask it to analyze that surface. Now you can see here, we've really got the best of both worlds. We have a nice rectangular isopalms. We have good curvature, good smooth curvature, nice acceleration, but we have no degradation, no singularity at all, which is perfect. So we can do whatever we like with this surface now. Let's go back and do that surface extend again. We can extend that face. It's not too big a deal. Inventor will deal with that quite happily. And worth bearing in mind if you're having trouble creating surfaces with odd numbers of sides.